At this point, you're asking yourself, do I really have to draw an atom every time I want to find my protons, electrons, and neutrons, my valence electrons, and how many shells an atom has? No, you do not. All this information can come from your periodic table. Your protons, electrons, and neutrons you can find from the element cube. This would be a good time to go back and review your element cube. Now I've showed you guys how to fold your periodic table to where the transitional metals do not show. Because at this point in eighth grade, we will only be working with groups one and two and groups 13 through 18. So these are the only elements that we need to practice. Now here is a picture of my periodic table, which as you can see, has all kinds of information on it. So let's go ahead and start marking up your periodic table and reviewing the things you need to know and the things that are going to help you answer the questions um, that I just mentioned. First thing I would add to my periodic table is eighth man. So somewhere on your periodic table, I would add eight man. Atomic number equals protons equals electrons. Mass minus atomic number equals your neutrons. Now we've talked about group numbers. The group numbers are at the top of your periodic table and group numbers go up and down. The next thing I would put on my periodic table are my metals, metalloids, and nonmetals, and I would either color them or outline them. Outlining them saves a lot of time, um, but make sure that you create a key so you know which ones are which. And this helps you understand the classification of the elements. Elements can be classified by metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. They can also be classified by groups and periods, which we're about to talk about. Reactivity, density, melting point, and the atomic number. So let's talk about group numbers. Okay, group numbers are the numbers at the top. These group numbers go vertical, they go up and down. So I would draw an arrow showing the group numbers go up and down. So when we talk about groups or families, this is what we're talking about. Now, you've probably noticed the numbers that are on the side, one through seven. These are your period numbers. Your period numbers go horizontal or left to right. These are very important as well and we'll discuss what they tell us in just a minute. All right, so we should have groups one, two, 13 through 18, and then we have periods one through seven. Your period numbers tell you how many shells an atom has. So, what I would do on my periodic table is period one I know has one shell. Period two has two shells. And period three has three shells. Now we will not go past period three. Hence the 288 eight rule. Group numbers tell us valence electrons. So they tell us the valence electrons. They also tell us that these elements have similar properties. So let's look at this. 
hydrogen, we noticed earlier, had one valence electron. Lithium had one valence electron. Sodium had one valence electron. So we know that group one has one valence electron. We know that group two has two valence electrons. If we go over, group 13 has three valence electrons. 14, four, and etc. So group 18, which is known as the noble gases, are the least reactive because they have a full shell. So which group is the most reactive? Group one. Group one has one valence electron, therefore being the most reactive. So this is a lot of information about our periodic table. So let's do an example. Let's look at sodium. And let's see if we can use the periodic table to help us answer all the following information. First, I need to find sodium. And sodium is here. So the symbol for sodium is in A. Okay, what group is it in? It is in group one. What period is it in? It is in period three. The atomic number is 11, so how many protons do I have? I have 11 protons, 11 electrons. The mass is 22.9, so I need to round that to get my neutrons. So 22.9 rounded to 23 minus my atomic number is how much? It is 12. So my neutrons equal 12. I know that my group number I know that my group number equals my valence electrons. However, let's just make sure. So my period number tells me that there are three shells. So I'm going to draw them. One, two, three. I know there's 11 electrons, and I have to remember my 288 eight rule. So the first shell can hold two, my second shell can hold eight, and that's gonna put me at 10 electrons. So now I have to go to the next shell, and now I have 11 electrons. So how many valence electrons do I have, which are the electrons on the outer shell? I have one. So do you see the group number equals valence electrons? Now if it is in group one, is this atom most or least reactive? It is definitely most reactive because the shell, the outer shell is not full and it's only holding one valence electron, and I know that group one is my most reactive of the elements. 
Is it a metal, non-metal, or a metalloid? And I know that sodium, according to my periodic table, is a metal. I know that its properties are similar to all the other elements in its group or family. And I know that it is very reactive. 